Good morning, everyone. Here's an update for Ukraine on this August 8th. On the battlefield, there's really been very little movement, no gains really on either side other than small uh, movements. This is because Ukraine has somewhat postponed its counteroffensive into Kherson, and Russia continues to reconsolidate and move around the battlefield in preparation for future operations. Instead, Ukraine is now choosing to continue to destroy Russian ammo depots, command posts, and logistics routes, such as bridges, in order to bleed Russia of the materials necessary to make war. So with Russia's uh, reduced ability to backfill these materials such a strategy may work but unfortunately it will prolong russian occupation of previous ukrainian territory leading to more suffering for those people now russia continues to move forces and restructure due to major personnel losses in the donbas region missile and rocket attacks from russia continue in most cities in the east but at a significantly reduced rate due to supply issues caused by the sanctions the length of the war and ukraine's ability to destroy uh, weapons and ammunition depots. Now, more than 450 foreign-made components have been found in Russian weapons that are recovered in Ukraine, uh, evidence that Moscow acquires critical technology from companies in the United States, Europe, and Asia, all leading up to the invasion. This means that they rely on those significantly. Now, since the start of the war five months ago, the Ukrainian military has captured or recovered from the battlefield intact or partially damaged Russian weapons. 27 of the weapon systems they've discovered, ranges from, ranging from cruise missiles to air defenses, were found to rely predominantly on Western components. Uh, some of them, up to two-thirds of the components inside the internals of the weapons, were manufactured by U.S. or European uh, companies. Now, other components in, in uh, a lesser arena came from Japan, South Korea, Switzerland, Netherlands, Germany, the United Kingdom. Uh, the United States seems seem to be the largest supplier of those components leading up to the war. Now, companies like Texas Instruments, AMD, uh, as well as Cypress Semiconductor, uh, and others have provided these chips to Russia leading up to the war. But the good news is these companies are now complying with trade sanctions and have stopped selling components to Russia, which is leading to a major tech crunch in their weaponry. So going forward, there may be uh, a significant drop in Russia's ability to make war as they run out of their stocks of, of materials and are once again relying on reprogrammed chips from appliances and other areas. Uh, moving on, Zaporizhia nuclear power plant has been struck twice due to fighting in the area. Russia and Ukraine each blame each other for the strikes, but the concern from the international community is that this is the largest nuclear facility in Europe, and a disaster would not only be a problem for Ukraine, but would impact negatively the entirety of Europe. Uh, Russia said that it will facilitate a visit by the International Atomic Energy Agency uh, to, so that they can inspect it. But just to be clear, radiation levels at the damaged nuclear plant remain normal, and they didn't hit any of the re reactors. Rather, they hit some of the substations and things. Ukraine is saying that Russia is trying to kill the power in the region so that uh, it can influence more operations going forward. Russia is also encouraging, for some reason, the U.S. and the West to pressure Ukraine to stop the shelling of the Zaporizhia plant. And I just have to say, what kind of fucking sense does that make for Ukraine to blow up its own nuclear power plant? It makes no sense. The fallout, both literally the fallout and figuratively from them destroying that power plant would be massively negative for Ukraine. So when Russia says that Ukraine is the one bombing it, I call bullshit 100% of the time. It's it's complete nonsense. It really doesn't even make sense for Russia to do it, but they're kind of fucking stupid. So, I mean, they could be just hitting it because most of that fallout uh, would move with the trade winds, which would blow it into Russia as well. Not that Russia has ever cared about its people. Uh, the European Union plans to cut gas consumption across the EU by 15% starting tomorrow. Uh, this is to cope with the energy crisis spurred by Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Now, industrial users will feel the pinch first, such as factories. And the factories have been given targets to reduce heating and cooling. Some of the more critical infrastructure factories could be spared, such as manufacturing of critical goods or plants that are difficult to restart after switching off energy, um, those will be uh, spared from some of the reductions, but the standard consumer is protected. Other industries will not be spared, unfortunately. Uh, 
cons- while consumers will be spared at this point of uh, the reductions, they're expected to do their part. There's going to be campaigns to encourage people to switch off lights and turn down thermostats and air conditioning, etc. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz says he does not consider support for the sanctions on Russia to be waning within Germany, even with energy bills expected to move uh, surge further higher. Uh, as you, Europe confronts this energy crisis. He said, we face difficult months ahead, but it is clear that we stand firmly on the side of Ukraine and we stand behind the sanctions that we agreed together with the European Union and the international community. He also said that Germany will not be launching the Nord Stream 2 regardless of whether supplies from Russia reduced uh, have reduced the volume of gas. Um, Amnesty International says it deeply regrets the distress and anger it caused, but it fully stands by their findings. The head, the head of Amnesty International in Ukraine quit over the report. So let's get something straight with Amnesty International. There are no legitimate targets for Russia in this invasion because every target in Ukraine is illegitimate. The reason for that is Russia shouldn't be invading other countries when it wasn't invaded itself or attacked itself or its allies weren't attacked first. This is not a defensive or responsive measure to wartime efforts from Ukraine. They are the invaders. That means that their uh, targeting is completely illegitimate, illegitimate. And make no mistake to Amnesty International. Every single time Russia now destroys a shopping mall or a residential block or a school or a church somewhere in Ukraine, they're going to point at the Amnesty International report. So good fucking job, Amnesty International. You fucked this up royally. So, I mean, you just hear the, yep, two dozen people have been torn to pieces. But did you see Amnesty International said that it could have been a Russian target? Go fuck yourself, AI. You guys are a garbage organization and have been for years. That's why I, haven't, I stopped supporting you so long ago. Because I saw the fucking shit you pulled in Iraq. Russian President Vladimir Putin is allegedly willing to offer energy and grain deals to North Korea in return for dictator Kim Jong-un's assistance in the invasion in Ukraine. Now, a pro-Kremlin news agency called Regime said that uh, said on August 7th that North Korea had made it clear through diplomatic channels that the country is willing to provide 100,000 soldiers to bolster Russia's dwindling force. The problem is, is this this Regime or Regum uh, news outlet is generally considered to be a massive propaganda arm, and relative to the other ones like TASS or RIA. This is even worse. This is something that the reliability is seriously in question. So not entirely sure if it's true or what North Korea would provide in that sense. But again, just as the axis of evil situation. So very strange. Now, according to a Ukrainian envoy to Turkey, uh, Vasil Bodnar, Turkey is slated to build a Bayraktar manufacturing plant. Those are the drones that have been so effective for Ukraine. Uh, They're building a plant in Ukraine. Uh, A week ago, the government gave the green light to buy the bilateral agreement, which Parliament must now ratify. Now, this is kind of weird given that Erdogan's recently had friendly chats with Vladimir Putin, but it seems like Turkey is trying to play both sides, obviously, like many countries are, uh, to try to maintain relations while defeating Russia and Ukraine. Uh, since July 20th, Wagner Group, the Russian-backed mercenary organization, has been recruiting inmates from prisons. They visited something like 17 prisons in 10 regions uh, to hire prisoners to fight. The inter- internal communications were in- intercepted and shown that they've recruited some 1,000 since the beginning of the war. However, since then, 200 have been killed, captured, or wounded, and an additional 100 have just deserted, which in Western terms means they escaped from prison. So I'm not sure what's worse, a Russian prison or a shithole Russian in, in a shithole country uh, or in some rural oblast in, in Russia or going to the Ukrainian front line. Either way, good job, Russia. There's now 100 new criminals out and about in your country because you just needed bodies for your shittily managed war. And then Russian proxies are preparing a sham uh, referendum in Luhansk saying, uh, with locals saying that they're being coerced by saying you will get food, water, and a good life if you vote for the referendum. Now, could you imagine if like European or American elections were like that? Like if the the campaign came out and said, vote for me and you will get food, water, and a good life. That's fucking Russia right there in a nutshell. Have a good rest of your day, everyone.